Okay, so the Bible says that God is a rewarder of those who seek him. And remember that as you go through this class, um, some of the things might be a little bit new, some of them might be a little bit difficult. But remember that as we seek him, and the more we seek him, the more victories we'll have. And our mindset, the way we, the way we think, will change. Um, so let's look at some real practical steps to overcoming addictive behaviors and attitudes. Um, this is really one of my favorite uh, lessons because it's a lot of this stuff is stuff that I've I've had to had to learn. So first off, get a physical to fill in the blank. There, physical is this a physical or a spiritual attack? See, the truth is that um, a physical exam, you know, by a general doctor. Uh, the the truth is that our spiritual and physical lives are are inherently connected into one being. And sometimes we'll have spiritual problems, and sometimes we'll have physical problems. And here's the thing. Not not all of our physical problems are going to go away just because we're a Christian. Some of us will still get cancer. Some of us will still get diabetes. Some of us will still get, I mean, go down the list. Um, it's a fact of living in a fallen world. But in the new heavens and the new earth, after the resurrection, we will not... Um, we will not have to suffer these things any longer. So, the next one there, the next film the blank, exercise. Exercise daily. Our physical bodies frequently lead to spiritual problems, okay? Um, if you don't exercise, for instance, um, sometimes it can cause depression. So, uh, third, eat healthier foods. The film the blank there is foods and eat regularly. Um, sometimes if you skip your um, breakfast or lunch or whatever, sometimes it can cause you to feel a little bit off. Um, eating healthy, don't eat junk food all day. You know, we, we eat greasy food, then we say, Lord, make this food, uh, you know, benefit our bodies. And it's like, uh, how about you eat beneficial food for your bodies? And then God won't have to, you know, make that, that those greasy fries turn into a lettuce or something in your stomach. <laughs> Um, so eat healthier foods and eat regularly. Get proper sleep. You need between six to eight hours. Uh, most people do. Um, but then again, a lot of people have uh, fear of sleep and insomnia and those kinds of things. And so you're going to have to really train yourself in sleep. And that's that's difficult to do, but not impossible. Um, excuse me. So judge your thoughts and answer them with scripture. Um, in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, when Jesus is being tempted, excuse me, he answers the things that Satan says with scripture. And in Philippians uh, 4, he talks about um, uh, controlling your thoughts and thinking about the things that are good. Uh, so judge your thoughts and answer them with scripture. Resolve all conflicts to the best of your ability. We talked about that in another lesson um, on conscience. Uh, having... Um, Having a clear conscience. So resolve all conflicts. It walks you through uh, conflict resolution to the best of your ability. Once again, if other people will not resolve the issue, there's not much you can do about that. But you can do everything that Christ would have done. You you can do that. Um, don't tempt yourself. The, the fill in the blank there is tempt. Um, we think, oh, I'm, I'm real strong. I'll never fall. And that's just not the truth. Um, James 1... 14 through 15. <clears throat> but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. Then when lust is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and when sin is accomplished, it brings forth death. One of the hardest things to do as a Christian is to accept your own failure. You looked at pornography because you decided to. It wasn't anybody else's fault. You do drugs because it was your decision. We need to stop blaming our parents. We need to stop blaming our kids. Stop blaming our spouse. You made the decision because you made the decision. Um, so don't tempt yourself. Hanging with friends who drink if you have an alcohol problem. Home alone when you, when you have internet access. Not a good idea. Not going to bed when your spouse goes to bed. Not a great idea. Not being accountable to someone. Not really not a good idea. You don't want to live life for yourself by yourself. If you are being tempted with sexual immorality, have sex with your wife. I, I can't abstain. Well, if you're married, you don't have to. 
um, don't apologize for your spouse, just FYI. When, if your spouse is going through something, be on their side and don't go and apologize to other people for your spouse. Have their back. Now, I'm not saying partake of any stupid activity that they do. That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying some people, you know, oh, forgive my husband. He's just an idiot. It's like, well, you know, you are one flesh. And I mean, you did make the decision to marry them. So um, don't assume you'll become so spiritual you will always overcome and never be tempted. That's just not going to happen ever. When temptations enter your mind, don't dwell on them. Everyone is tempted in a different area. <coughs> Excuse me. Everyone is tempted in a different area. Don't assume that um, it's just going to disappear. And Oh, I'm better than everyone else now. It's not going to happen like that. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so don't dwell on the temptations uh, that enter your mind. Um, it looks something like this. You get in, you get it in your in your head. I'm gonna do this thing, and you know that it's kind of a stupid thing that you probably shouldn't do. But you sit there and you think about it, and you kind of start talking to yourself about it. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. Don't do that. <laughs> when it enters in your head, cha change it. Think about something else. Um, there, I mean, for instance, if it's something sexual, go take a very cold shower. Go do something else. Get out of the environment. Do something. Um, don't just kind of expect for you to have the willpower to overcome. Well, I'm sitting here at my house with my cell phone, and no, nobody's here, and I'm not going to look at pornography. Okay. Well, that's an idea. After we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit begins transforming us into his image. But that, you know, that, that is kind of a process, though. It is kind of a process. So, back on track here. Um, on your sheet there it says, separate yourself from what encourages you to sin, like movies, music, friends. Um, but after we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit begins transforming us into his image. But the thing is, we're not there yet. It's a process. So separate yourself from whatever encourages you to sin. If you have a movie with sex scenes or something immoral in it or something demonic in it, get rid of it. Don't love your movie more than God. If you have music with ungodly lyrics and principles, get rid of it. Don't listen to stuff that is contrary to what God says. If you have friends who smoke and drink and those kinds of things and you're trying to get away from that, don't hang out with them. Or tell them, you know, I, you can't do that here. Um, min minimize the benefits in, in, your, in your mind and magnify the consequences of sin. Remember you will regret, it, regret your sin longer than you will enjoy it. How long does it look to, take to look at pornography? Not that long. But how long do you regret looking at pornography? Um, you know, in the Bible, it talks a lot about the consequences of sin. I had some there on your sheet. Um, we're not going to look at those today. No, we'll look at Romans 13, 14. Romans 13, 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lusts. No provision. So, uh, discover your triggers. We kind of get conditioned to sin, if you understand what I'm saying. We become conditioned to behave or feel based on repeated patterns, things we do regularly. Every time I play a certain video game, I feel enticed to watch porn. Don't play that video game. Don't play it at that time. Play when other people are around. When it rains, I feel really sad. So start doing things that make you happy when it, when it's raining, and you can repro kind of reprogram the way you think about stuff. Um, and also be real with the past. Sometimes we something will have happened in the past, and we kind of just keep ignoring it. Um, another thing is if sometimes if it's too cloudy, it, especially in like wintertime, it will make us feel depressed because we're not getting the, the light from the sun that we need, um, and multivitamins are great for that. Um, I've been smoking after work every day since I was in high school. I tried to quit, but at that time, I get a desire that I can't fight off. I get that, but you're going to have to retrain yourself. Take a break at a different time. Don't buy cigarettes. Don't hang around with people who smoke. Tell people that you're trying to stop smoking. There's lots of different options. Um, so the triggers was the was that fill in the blank. 
Um, I'm sorry, that wasn't that wasn't a fill in the blank. We're looking at the next line. Sorry. Uh, some people forget to take their morning pills unless they have breakfast. This is a good example of how to get yourself in a rut. Uh, a routine helps you to remember things. Ch uh, change your lifestyle, and some temptations will be removed. If you get a job, for instance, you won't be sitting around your house all day, and then you won't have to say no to pornography because you'll be at work. To discover a trigger, keep a journal. And every time you do the thing, write down what preceded it, what happened during it, and what, what happened after it. Um, and then you can start comparing and see what comment, what, what is, um, what, how you've conditioned yourself to sin. Um, eventually, you will discover common factors. Be aware of life cycles. Cycles is the, is the fill in the blank. Sinful patterns which lead to sinful habits. See, we do something and then it becomes a habit. And then it becomes part of our lifestyle. So beware of those of those different cycles. A cycle can be a length of time, circumstance, or even weather conditions. Obeying less of the flesh establishes a pattern of sin. When you do something that is wrong, it establishes a pattern. These patterns continue to grow stronger until they become habits. They are repeated and repeated and repeated. When we are saved, we receive a new nature. If we obey the Holy Spirit rather than the lust of our flesh, and I have a diagram to show this, so just hold on. If we obey the Holy Spirit rather than doing sin, we form spiritual patterns rather than sinful patterns. Okay, so you can, you're you going to form form patterns in your life either way. Do you want to form sinful patterns or spiritual patterns? There will be a pull from our old nature no matter what you do. There will always be the enticement to sin. If we obey that enticement, if we sin, if we obey the lust, we stop God's work in and through us. He, we, we put kind of a cap on it. If we obey the spirit, we build spiritual patterns. So there we have both the pros and cons of both of them. Well, there aren't any cons about the spirit, but I mean cons of not obeying the spirit. Um, if these patterns continue to grow, we gain a desire to do what is right over what is wrong. We gain a desire to do what is right. I'm at the point in my life, I've been I've been off pornography for a number of years, and I'm at the point now where if if I'm ever enticed to, I, I can't think about it because I realize a few things. Number one, God sees what I'm doing. Number two, that person has value in God's sight. And they're selling their body, and they don't even understand that what they're doing is sinful, and they don't understand that they're loved more than that. They've never known God's love. And then I put myself in their shoes, and I realize probably some of them feel real stuck. And then I start thinking about how that's somebody's daughter, about how that might someday be somebody's wife, somebody's mom. And then I start realizing about the things that pornography does. Pornography is a big, big factor for uh, for uh, uh, abuse of spousal abuse, child abuse, um, child pornography, uh, sex trafficking, uh, slave, the slave traffic trade. It's it's a leading cause in all those things. And when I look at porn, I'm helping that. Not only that, but there's just something inside of me that says this isn't fun. Why would I want to do this? But it didn't. It wasn't like that overnight. It took time. So this, this, this process of, of giving way from, instead of obeying the temptations, obeying what the Holy Spirit says, this produces moral freedom. You don't have to walk around in guilt. This is an example of what it looks like, okay? Here are the, li here are the life cycles I was talking about. Imagine them as a circle. I mean, that's great. Or that's actually an oval, but you get the idea. Here's our old nature, okay? And here's the cycle in our old nature. So whatever happens at this point, I sin. And then I come back around, and I start building a pattern. See, these little blips on the line here, those are sinful patterns. And those patterns become habits, where every time I reach that site and that stage in the cycle, I repeat it. Repeated behavior, and that becomes a habit. Okay. Now, let's look when we're given a new nature. The same cycles, but a new nature. So now we have these. Whoop, these are godly patterns, doing things God's way instead of our ways. And now I'm learning new habits. And there will always be the pull from the old nature to go back. So I can obey God or I can obey sin. But either way, somebody's going to be my boss. Who's going to be my boss, God or sin? And well, I can only serve one master. Who's it going to be, God or sin? And as I establish these habits and these patterns, they become habits, which changes my lifestyle. This is how we reinvent ourselves. Uh, my wife and I had a fight, so I looked at porn to get back at her. To make myself feel better, which takes us to step two. Because I looked at porn, my wife and I had another fight, so I looked at porn again. 
See, we're looking at it's a, it's becoming a it's becoming a habit. My wife and I got a divorce, so now I look at porn to feel better about her abandoning me. See, it's all about me. And see, if you notice, at first the porn was a reaction was 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 a choice, but then it became a reaction, and then it became a lifestyle. See how that works? Patterns establish habits. Four, I live by myself now, and I look at porn every night before I go to bed. See, whereas it could have been intimacy between him and his wife, he made a choice, and it was not her fault. It was his fault. He made the choice. Remember that our sin is our own fault. Stop trying to blame everybody else for your sin. So that's how that looks. Um, so people are always either obeying or fighting sin. That's just a way of life. Patience or anger. You will either actively pursue patience or you will actively pursue anger. It, it, that's how life works. Life in a lot of ways is black and white. Not always, but in a lot of ways it is. When you are tempted to sin, realize it is an opportunity to test your faith. James 1 talks about that. Um, the more you obey God, the more you desire to do what is right. Don't give up. We'll look at that. Hebrews 10.39. <coughs> Excuse me. Hebrews 10.29 says this. How much severe punishment do you think he will does um do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the son of God who is regarded as an unclean who <laughs> who has regarded as unclean this the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace when we sin we are insulting the spirit of grace there is a lot to lose when you give up there's a lot to gain when you don't giving up doesn't make the problem go away it just ensures you won't have victory. So no matter how spiritual you become, your flesh will always love the lust of the flesh. It doesn't matter who you are, there will always be the desire to sin. You choose to sin because you like it. That's why sinners sin because they're sinners. Christians sin because they really like it. So submit your desires to God. He will give you new desires. When you hold on to your desires, your dreams, your plans, your purposes, it prevents the Lord from changing your heart. Because you're living life on your terms. Therefore, you don't want God what God wants because you want what you want. Don't work around sin. For instance, uh, AIDS, for a large part, could be eradicated in one generation. Um, if you know sex was controlled and everything, um, it could, for a large part, be eradicated um, within one, one generation. But what we like to do is we like to work around sin. Oh, don't get an STD. It's okay. I'll, t I'll use a condom. Or you could just not have sex. I mean, you could either work around sin or you could just not sin. So that takes us to a few things. If you look on sheet, don't be fooled. Your flesh will always desire fulfillment no matter how spiritual you are. Submit your desires. Desires is the phone the blank there. So that takes us to the idea of stewardship. Um, a steward is someone who watches over something for someone else. So that causes two questions. Is it mine to use? And is this a wise use? A pastor is a steward of the church. He is not the ruler of the church. God is. And he has to make decisions and act in the authority of God. But all the while, if he goes against what God wants, he will be judged for it, and he will be judged harsher by people too. 1 Peter 4.10 says, as each one has received a spiritual, a special uh, gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So that takes us to the idea of what we own. Everything I have is a gift from God to be wisely invested. And if you remember in the introduction to this class, we talked about those those ten um, values, and this was was, you know, uh, the, well that's really the root of the whole class, but. Um, it really, it talked a lot about this too. Everything I have is a gift from God to be wisely invested. That means my time, I should not waste it. My money, I should not waste it. My thoughts, I shouldn't waste my thoughts with nonsense. And my things, I shouldn't, I shouldn't waste my things. Anything that I have is a gift from God to be wisely invested. Once resources are spent, they can't be reused. They're gone. If you have money and you spend it, you can't make more appear. It's just gone. Everybody has limited resources. Our government has limited resources. Um, you have limited resources. Everything in life is governed by resources. There's no such thing as an infinite amount. And that's one of the reasons why our government is in large amounts of debt. <laughs> so, 
we cannot live however we want. We are examples. Everything we do has an effect. Everything we do on us or on others. You have to remember this. We are examples and everything we do has an effect. So we cannot live however we want. God will not hold us guiltless. Though there are consequences, the film of blank, there is consequences for our actions. God does not give up on us till the very end. Even if you are in the middle of, of suffering for what you did in the past, God is not giving up on you. He's disciplining you, working in you character. Uh, because if left on our own devices, we kind of just do the same thing over and over again. So there's a planting time and a harvest time. Things just, there, there, there's this process of life. Not every moment is equal. Is it mine to use, and is this a wise use? My time, my money, everything. There's, there's a planting time, there's a harvest time. You, you can't harvest in, when you're supposed to be planting, and you can't plant when you're supposed to be harvesting. You can't. You sh you, when it's time to work, you go to work. When it's time to sleep, you sleep. Life is governed by these little processes. You will never be a teen again. Once you're, once you're no longer a teenager, it's gone. Your children will never be toddlers again. There's a process. You only have one chance to do this, and then... See what I mean? But here's the thing. With a lot of tests, God will bring by more tests to help us gain in character. And he will keep bringing, keep allowing us chances and keep allowing us chances. But life is governed by that cycle. After you raise your children, you must influence your grandchildren. It's a process. Handing off the baton. I raise my kids. Now they raise their kids. Now they raise their kids. It's a process. And the world will keep spinning with or without us. Um, so we have to learn how to manage our time better. Um, is it Sunday? Do I go to service? Or is it Monday? Do I go visit people in prison? Manage your time. Um, is, as a pastor, is it time for um, to write a sermon? Or is it time to go visit people? Um, as, a, as, a, as a Christian, is it time to listen to a sermon? Or is it time to worship? Some people, I don't go to, work, I don't go to church because I, I worship in my house. Time to witness to that person or time to teach? You see, there's different times in life, and we have to respect time because it'll go by all the same. Um, so just a few ideas here. You do not receive back as you invest. So the film of blank there is invest. In life, this is just a factor. If you plant one seed, you get a lot of produce from that one seed. A life of sin can be forgiven and an inheritance renewed. God is merciful in his blessings and delayed in his wrath. That's just the, the way that things work. If you live for God, there will be great consequences. If you don't live for God and you turn to God, God can God can get rid of what has been and give you something new. And then God is merciful in his blessings. He gives you more than you deserve. You don't get what you deserve because if you did get what you deserved, you wouldn't exist. Or you'd be in hell, either or. We all have it better than we deserve. And he's delayed in his wrath. Every second that we live is a blessing from God. So let's let, let's look uh, now at correcting physical and spiritual laziness. Laziness isn't something that we just do physically. We looked at that in a previous lesson. But it can also be spiritual laziness. Well, I'm just too lazy to read my Bible. I'm just too lazy to go to church. Laziness. Um, some good ways to do this, fast, give up food, don't eat. When the body is deprived of food, man, I tell you what, that'll get your attention. If you don't if you don't have a job and you don't have food, that's a great motivator to get up and work. Don't give food to lazy people, fast or don't give food. Um, Genesis 3.19 says that by the sweat of the brow they're supposed to be working because of the curse. So I know they're your, your kids or whatever, but they got to get up off their butt and work. Uh, you have to learn, learn to, uh, so don't just fast or, or uh, not give food, but also learn to work hard. Um, Proverbs talks about this a lot. Um, rise early. Get up in the morning. If you're trying, looking for a job, get up at, at 6. Be at the places inquiring about, about whether um, they have any positions at by 7. If it's already after 9, it's probably too late. And that's that's quitting time. You really only have about a two-hour window to look for jobs, seven to nine, and it, that's really it. Um, when you turn in an application, go in in person and, and say, hey, look, I turned in an application. I, I really need a job. Uh, uh, do you have any openings? Come in well, pre well presented. I already talked about this in a previous lesson, and uh, it will really help. Um, 
respect time. Let me read some passages here. Psalm 90, 10. As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years, or if due to strength, 80 years. Yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, for soon it is gone and we fly away. Um, and then Proverbs 10, 5. He who gathers in summer is a son who acts wisely, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who acts shamefully. And the Bible just has a lot to say about stuff like that. So uh, let's keep on track here. The next one, time is no respecter of persons, and once lost is gone forever. You will never get that moment back. So you can't mourn about the past, but you have time now. While it's still called today, do what you can. Um, don't give laziness a start. A little slumber, a little folding of the, of the hands to rest. It starts small, but it all ends up with sorrow. It ends up with loss. It ends up with with debt. Don't give it a start. That's how some, some just real quick uh, steps to correcting the laziness. So <clears throat> a few more things about um, reinventing yourself. Um, refuse to give Satan a foothold. You know, sometimes we think, oh, well, Satan's really doing something. Don't open the door in your life. Well, you know, I, I, I think I'm doing okay. Okay, all right, all right. But are you are you honoring your those in authority? Are you allowing sin in your life? Are you allowing things on your TV? Are you see what I mean? Don't give Satan that little foothold. And that's one of the one of the first things there. The fill in the blank there, judge yourself. Judge your thoughts, judge your actions, judge your attitudes, judge, judge your words, and judge your motivations as compared to God and his word, not your opinions and not others. I think I'm a pretty good person. What is God's word saying? Where do we need to grow? Um, well, compared to them, I'm a good person. Okay, but what about compared to God? Change daily. Always be growing. Never reach a place of thinking, I've got it all together. Don't become stagnant. Always judge you. Always, always judge yourself. Did I, did I do the right thing there? Don't just take for granted I'm right because I'm me. Okay. <laughs> uh, continually grow. We do this by serving. Focus on Christ. Serving and focus on Christ. So you're seeking God, and you're serving others. You're either going forward or backward. Never forget that. This is not like oh I, I'm in a happy little place there. Nope. If you start laying off the throttle, you're going backwards. Um, okay, so reject prideful attitudes. Learn from everything. You do not have every answer. Others see you differently than you see you. Maybe you should listen to uh, what other people have to say. Listen to others at least with a grain of salt. Even if they're your enemy, even if what they're saying it just doesn't sound right at all, at least consider what they said. Uh, the past is the past. Good or bad, it's the past. Today, seek God. Today, love others. And today, do the right thing. Well, I really messed up back then. Eh, okay, but it's, our, it's in the past now. So we find fulfillment as we put uh, God first and follow his ways. So the fill in the blank there is fulfillment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Matthew 6, where it talks about seeking first the kingdom of God. Never settle in your walk with Christ. Never say, this is good enough. I'm good enough. God always wants you to know him deeper and in a newer way. He, he has more to show you. Even if you think that you know him, great. There is so much more to God's character than you know. Be humble and be loving. Be willing to t listen to advice. Christianity is, is a lot about balance and not a lot about extremes. Be clean, not a germ freak, and don't be a slob. Be moderate. Don't overeat. Don't be anorexic. Don't have to only pray and read your Bible, but you don't have to never read, read either. Don't have to give up all forms of entertainment, but you don't have to watch everything. You don't have to spend night and day in a church, but you don't have to never go to church. There is such a thing as balance. Um, so what you put in will come out. That's just a fact of life. If you eat trash, your body will not be healthy. If you watch trash, your spirit will not be healthy. If you do not exercise, you will feel 
sluggish. If you are not praying and reading your Bible and fasting, your spirit will feel sluggish. You will not have purpose in your life. You will feel very confused. You will not uh, feel like you have a reason for existence. If you listen to music about sexual immorality, you will probably have a harder time being and thinking pure. Well, imagine that you read a song, you, you you listen to a song all the time about some guy having sex with some girl, and you want to have sex all of a sudden. Oh, gee, I wonder why. If you watch horror movies or rebuke authority, you will have demonic influence in your home. Be passionate for God by refusing to fall in love with the world. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Really just a great passage there. So if you have any questions, ask them below. I'll finish this sucker off by reading some passages um, that are on your sheet. Uh, 1 John 2.15 Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 Peter 2, 1-3 through 3. Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander, like newborn babies, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. Um, Proverbs 3, 11. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his reproof. 6.23 For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching is light, and reproofs for discipline are the way of life. And 12.1 Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 No, I won't read that one. But there's a lot of good passages there on your sheet. Just look through them. Make sure you make sure you read them because this is really for your benefit. You might think, oh man, I, I'm too busy for that. Don't be too busy to grow. And don't be too busy for God. Next lesson is seeking God. The only reason why I didn't read those passages in this le in this video was so that way it wouldn't, um, wouldn't take up a lot of time. Because as you can see on your sheet, there's a lot of film of blanks. I mean, uh, 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 scripture. Okay, next one will be about seeking God. What does that mean and how do we do it?